look, Charlie. Look, Istanbul. What'd you expect in Turkey? Pittsburgh? Ugh. Look, Charlie, it says Istanbul is the threshold of Asia, the colorful city of 444 mosques. Ah. Uh, 444 mosques. You want to take me to every one of them. You? <laughs> Who needs you? Listen, I can go alone anytime I want to, and, uh, and maybe not alone, you understand? All right, all right. I mean, there's lots of interesting people one can meet while traveling, people interested in culture and, and, and things. Um, could I trouble you, Mr. Brennan? No trouble, but uh, no smoking, it says there. We're going down. Oh, oh, sure. Well, this is sort of like uh, coming home for you, isn't it? Sort of like. <laughs> Airline system, flight 100, from Karachi, Tehran, Damascus, and Beirut, arriving at gate 5. Welcome to Istanbul. Oh, oh, I'm the guide. You're the guide. Well, Istanbul's all right. <laughs> Excuse me. Mr. Brennan. Right. Would you step this way, please? Uh, can I have my passport, please? Brennan. Most welcome, Brad. You see, we're not exactly unexpected. Oh, nice to be remembered. I have no idea what a pleasure it is to see you again. How often I have wondered about you. May I? Yes. Five years is a long time to stay away. When one has a particular attachment. A war had something to do with that. Oh, yes. Korea. James Brennan. Captain, U.S. Air Force, Devastation Swan Suico Power Plant, Distinguished Service Cross, Honorable Discharge. It's a very fine record, Ben, and I congratulate you. And now you uh, you've given up flying? No. Except it's a little difficult without an airplane. The one I had got uh, lost. Or would you remember that? Perfectly. Your papers, please. Thank you. And the purpose of your visit? Traveling through here to Iran on business. I heard the oil companies need pilots. So, you're passing through Istanbul on your way to Iran. That's most interesting. Oh, Inspector. You're such a suspicious type. You know, that's the kind of thing that breaks up old friendships. Oh, I hope not. But you know, I must ask myself why you have come back. Sentimental journey, perhaps? Pilgrimage to the scene of a former happiness? But that would only reopen an old wound. So I must feel that it is not sentiment that brought you back, but uh, diamonds. I wish I could help you find them. But I never did know what you were talking about. Thanks. It's been delightful chatting about old times. It only remains for me to hope that we all enjoy your stay in Istanbul. Thanks. And if there's anything I can do for you at all, Inspector, you'll be sure and let me know, won't you? I'll be at the same hotel. Have a pleasant visit. Mr. Brennan. Cousin, good to see you. Good to see you. It has been a long time. Yep. I'd like my old room, eh? Ah, yes, I remember. 424. Why, 
I'm sorry, Mr. Benham. 424 has already been taken. An American couple just arrived. Oh, that wouldn't be Mr. and Mrs. Boyle, would it? Oh, yes, you know them? Hmm. If you wish, I will move you in when they check out. Good. In the meantime, I will put you next door, room 422. 422. Bye, you, Kader Kudur. Bonjour, messieurs. This way, please. You wish anything, sir? James Brennan. Thank you, Istanbul. Thank you, beautiful night. And thank you, whatever you are called. That sounds just a little bit too much like goodbye. I didn't mean that. Really, I didn't. What should I say to remove the spell? It should be in Turkish or it won't work. Turkish? Yes. Ah. Hakikat. <laughs> Calvin. Gilea, Dilden Dial. <laughs> that sounds like wonderful magic. What does it mean? Truth comes from the heart, not the tongue. I like that. Did you just make it up? Of course. <laughs> you know what we say in Munich when we feel the way I do now? Tell me. I love you. When I fall in love It will be forever Or I'll never fall In love In a restless world like this is Love is ended before it's begun And too many moonlight kisses Seem to cool in the warmth of the sun When I give my heart It will be completely Or I'll never give my heart And the moment I can feel that You feel that way too Is when I fall in love With you And the moment I can feel that You feel that way too 
is when I fall in love with you. Danny. Hi. Oh. You old spellbinder, if I could sing like that, man, I wouldn't do anything else. Come on, sit down and have a drink. No, thank you. Like the cop says, not when I'm on duty. Oh, that's a good boy. How's it going with you, Miss Barr? Thank you, Danny. What a lovely song. You've never sung it more beautifully. Well, you should know. You've heard it every night for a solid week. Well, tonight it was best. It sounded special. Well, let's say the way you heard it was special. <laughs> Get him. One month in Turkey, and he's already giving with the Proverbs. What's with you, flying dynamite to the islands or fertilizer to Italy? Uh, fly anything, any place, any time, you know me. However, I am uh, temporarily retired. And I feel temporarily unnecessary. Oh, no, Danny, please. Please, nothing. I can't afford you to. Huh? Why not? What's Translation, please. Well, every time I come over here and look into your love-glazed eyes, I start moping about my girl in New York. Huh? Do you know how much it costs to call New York from Turkey? Ouch. I got to go help the fellas make it with the music. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. Nice guy. First class. Mm -hmm. That's my ship, isn't it? Getting ready to sail. No regrets. It's going away. I don't want to go away. Not even to go home. Home is not the place where you're born, it's where you're happy. There she goes. Two weeks ago, I stood on her deck when she came in, wondering whether Istanbul would like me. <laughs> Where were you two weeks ago? Oh, flying in the load of machinery from England. Flying in, flying out. You like that, don't you? Well, the army taught me how. I haven't found anything I'd like to do better. Besides, now I've got my own plane. I, it's a lot nicer not getting shot at. Tim... Did you say goodbye to a girl in England? A girl? Mm-mm. Safety in numbers, I always figured. <laughs> the important thing, though, is that up till now, there's never been a place I, I was sorry to leave. When I think of the vacations I have wasted elsewhere, Italy last year and North Africa the year before. Don't think of yesterday. Today's the important thing. and I've been here since half past two. Where is he? When I finally find him, he's having lunch. He said to be right over. Hi, Florian. What's wrong? Harley said it was urgent. At 2.30, I came here to ask you to take on a load of machinery for Cairo. It's already loaded in your plane. Now, it's most important... Oh, Harley, is that all? I ought to break your neck interrupting my lunch. But, Jim, I thought you wanted the business. You mean to say you're not interested? Oh, sorry. But that means a tidy sum. Yeah, I know, but uh, I'm not taking many jobs right now. My firm has given you a lot of business, Brennan. Sure. I appreciate that, but uh, I'm sticking around this a while. Of course, if your uh, social life means more to you than working for Florian and Temple, we'll take our business elsewhere. Jim, darling, I... Oh. Hi. Good afternoon. May I present Miss Stephanie Bauer, Inspector Norell. My pleasure, Miss Bauer. How do you do? Everything legal, Inspector? Perfectly. I await the day when you succumb to temptation. Ah. Darling, the Inspector is what you might call a customs cop. He awaits the day when he figures I'll come in loaded with contraband. I don't think Mr. Florian expected you to turn him down. Are you going out of business? No, but uh, we have so much to do here in Istanbul. 
It is a pleasure to have met the lady who can keep Jim Brennan from making what I think is called a fast buck. Good day, Miss Bauer. So long, Inspector. Come on, darling, let's finish lunch. Mr. Florian was very angry. Yeah, odd type, eh? The trip to Cairo would only take two or three days. I'd still be here when you get back. You must be practical. Practical? Oh, I hate that word, even from you. When you come back, I'll have found a place to live and a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'll try to break all records. Make it back in two days. That would be very nice. Up here. I'm just going to see as is for a moment. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, give these cigarettes to Inspector Norral. Tell him I smuggled them in. surprise. Good to see you, too. Am I interrupting something? No, no, uh, I'm quite alone. Uh, uh, but tell me, where have you been? How is your life? My life? Never better. I've been flying around Africa, Europe, made a few bucks here, lost a few there, and uh, found a girl. Oh, a girl? Uh, you must tell me about her. I want to get something special for her because she's a very special person. And I... Well, anything wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing at all. Uh, whatever you give her will be highly special, I assure you. Good. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, no, well, no nothing of that sort. It must be a gift to make a remembrance. That's it. Well, Jim. <clears throat> Look, if I should need uh, a favor... Sure. Anything you say? Well, well, what's the trouble? Please, do not ask me now, but if tomorrow or next week I should need your help... Well, you know where I am. Same hotel. I'll be glad to give it. Thank you. But we have forgotten your lady, and I know just the thing. Good. Is you? Sure it does, but this is out of my range. It is my gift to you and your lady. Oh, no. <laughs> this thing must be worth a fortune. Very well, then. You may buy it. The price is uh, 50 American dollars. You lie on your teeth. You may refuse my gifts, but don't tell me my business. No point in arguing with you. You know your business. I wish you and your lady happiness. Thanks. Oh, and about that favor. Yes, uh, Jim. Are you going to stay here for a while? You bet your life I am. Well, then, uh, uh, perhaps you'll hear from me in a few days. Good. Take care of yourself. Oh, that's true, too.
they never fall in love. In a restless world like this is, love is ended before it's begun. I wish we could just go on like this. His eyes, they are sad, aren't they? He seems to be looking out over a great empty distance, wondering what's ahead for him. I used to do it. After my father and mother died, I used to go miles out of my way to avoid the house where they were caught in the bombing. But you had friends. Gone or changed? I don't know what you said. When I met you, it seemed like an end of fate. Does he understand what we are saying? Who? He. Oh. <laughs> Don't know if he understands the language. Tell the one he gets the idea. Serious. Will you marry me? You know I will. Don't you? Yes. I won't have to leave you, have I? Too many long nights alone. Not even a date. So I got a little too lonely. And now you're a little too late You never would write, you never would call While I had the blues, you were having a ball You thought that I'd be here to run to And I'm gonna do to you what I was done to Too bad about you, my friend It could have been great But I was a little too lonely And you were a little too late Say, that was okay, fellas. We'll put that in tonight. And be on time for a change. Hi, fellas. What's your problem? They want me to do a benefit in Ankara this Sunday. And I thought if you happened to be flying that way, I could hitchhike. Oh, gee, nothing I'd like better, Danny, but uh, if I did, I'd be missing my own honeymoon. You'd miss Bauer? This afternoon. Well, congratulations, Jim. Real good luck in everything. Well, if you got a bride waiting, what are you standing around here for? Yeah, what for? Give her my best. Long distance, please. New York. I still say there should be a law that once you decide to be married, you are married. <laughs> I should have known that after filing, there's a three weeks delay. I have a little gift for you. Your engagement present. There's someone out there. Please don't tear my shirt. The material is irreplaceable. Oh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> your uh, balcony has a truly amazing view. Yes. Be sure and drop in any time. Now, let's talk about you. You see before you Paul Rankoff, a miserable thief, m most unskillful. I'm, I'm always caught. I have nothing to hide. I... Who sent you here? Who would send me? <laughs> Only a fool would employ a man like me. Oh, those are lovely cufflinks. Mm. What do you want? 
The diamonds? Why shouldn't we do business, you and I? If, if you have the diamonds, I have the contacts to dispose of them. Nobody else involved. <laughs> so you beat me up, Mr. Brennan. What do I care? I, I'm always beaten up. But you won't kill me. Don't be so sure. But just in case something stuck to your fingers, you mind if I have a look? Uh-huh. Now let me show you something, hmm? You see that door? If you ever come through it again, I'll ram it right down your throat. You believe me? Oh, oh yes, implicitly, I do. Yes. Yeah. Why didn't you call the police? Oh, darling, they haven't got time to waste on a petty thief. Jimmy spoke of diamonds. Why does he come to you? I haven't you heard? Americans? Fantastically rich. And there's proof of it. Here's your engagement present. Like it? More than anything in my whole life. <laughs> Just something I stole from an old friend. Oh, we have to invite him to the wedding. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. What's your problem? Have you got a cigarette, please? Sure. Could you not hazard a guess, sir? Bullets in my coat. Pretty good going over. Ten or twelve bucks. Ustanara. You take me for a thief, then? You'll do. The one comes along. Temis. Where are they, sir? You tell me what, I'll tell you where. The diamonds. What diamonds? White, brilliant, and most valuable. Sorry, I'm fresh out. I want those stones, sir. I haven't got any. You saw your friend Aziz the other afternoon, hmm? Sure, sir. He gave them to you then. <coughs> Very well, Mr. Brennan. Until the next time. Now, you told uh, Officer Sarach here that you spent the entire evening with Miss Barr. Correct. Those men that beat you up, have you never seen any of them before? Nope. Then how do you account for it? If I ever meet him again, I'll make a point to inquire. And when was the last time you saw your friend Aziz Rakim? Aziz? He's got nothing to do with this. But since we are all so mystified, how can we be sure? 
As a matter of fact, you saw him just a few days ago. Then why ask me? Policemen's have it. Rakim has disappeared, Mr. Brennan. Not only from his shop and apartment. We've searched the city. Impossible. Not impossible, Brennan. Merely an arresting coincidence. Shall I tell you another? One day you were low in funds. The next you plan to marry this charming lady. And I do not think that you would undertake such a step if you were to remain a poor man. At the same time, we are informed that $200,000 worth of stolen diamonds have been smuggled into Istanbul from Cairo. In such a bracelet as yours, Miss Barr. It is yours for the moment. It would be a pity to lock it up in the vault. Wouldn't it? It's very beautiful. Well, if we can't help you any further, can we leave now? Very well, and this uh, officer Sir Arch has further questions. Oh, one moment, please. Yes? Thank you. This will interest you. The merchant Aziz Rakim has been found. He was discovered in the harbor area, dead of knife wounds. You're free to go. How did it happen? Why did those men beat you up, Jim? They thought I had a line on some diamonds. You have? I didn't steal them. I know you didn't, but... Uh, trust me. Tell me something. How would you like to be married in Paris? I think Paris would be very suitable. Uh, then get upstairs and pack fast. Jim, the diamonds, you're going to give them back, aren't you? Back? Back to whom? Aziz or those thugs who killed him? The police. The police? The police didn't take a breeding for them, I did. Those diamonds only belong to the man who's got them. Now go on, get ready for that $200,000 honeymoon. See you in the night. Good day, Miss Power. Hello. Come in, Brennan, come in. You must, uh, you must forgive us. Another hour and all would have been as it was. Oh, that's all right. Coming back to an empty room wouldn't feel the same. One till two. Yes, sir. Now, if you get your bloodhounds out of here, I'd like to start packing. You're leaving us? Yes, with deep regret. But why the sudden decision? Miss Bauer and I are flying to Paris. We're going to be married. We wouldn't want to wake up and find you underneath the bed. Bershayok. Hmm? Bershayok. How do you get? You will permit me a personal search? Of course. Feel free. <laughs> you still looking for those diamonds or what? At least it was preoccupation. And you still refuse to help us, eh? What if I could? If you know the whereabouts of the diamonds, the Turkish customs authorities... Could get off the hook, huh? What about Aziz? 
I am sorry, that is not my department. And diamonds aren't my department. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to leave. No, I don't mind. In fact, I insist. You are to be deported from Turkey, Mr. Brennan. Deported? On what grounds? You are an undesirable alien. Under suspicion by the police and the customs authorities. Believe me, I can have your visa revoked and put you on the Paris plane within an hour. I'll fly my own plane. That won't be possible, I'm afraid. Pending the clarification of certain uh, technicalities, your aircraft will be impounded. I see. Well, that would be a good deal, presuming I had the diamonds. Well, those diamonds will never leave Turkey, Mr. Brennan. Until the time of boarding the plane, you will be in my custody. You will allow me? Sure. You certainly got a reservation for Miss Bauer. Yes, yes. Flight reservations, please. Lido de Young and Wise. Get your message. What's the problem? There's a fire. Lido Apartments. Hold on. Let's be out of it here. Ferguson! Miss Bauer. Have you seen Miss Bauer? I get you. What do I? Miss Bauer, the astronaut. Have you seen her? I saw her. Where is she? Where'd she go? None came out of the building. Well, 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 come back. Well. their past recognition. The fire seems to have started in her part of the building. It's very old. Oh, what can I say? Nothing. Mr. Brennan. Mr. Brennan, it's pleasant to see you again. Is it? I've already been here two minutes. What kept you? Oh, it is nice that you haven't forgotten Paul Rankoff. May I buy a drink? Oh, no, save your money. You're the kind that'll die broke. Oh, thank you. You know, Mr. Brennan, I am badly paid, but I make up for it with treachery. Hmm. Uh, you wouldn't care to buy a little information. Like what? Like the name of my employer. Mm. Oh, dear. It's a pity. His name is Darius. He's an old acquaintance of yours. You met him once in an alley. He'd like to see you. No, oh, really, he would. Wonder what we'd talk about. Oh, I rather suspect diamonds. I might enjoy that. This time I can promise you a most civilized meeting. Good. Don't count on it.
How good of you to come, Mr. Brennan. Yes, of course, you do remember me. Like yesterday. And naturally, you have certain ideas of violence and revenge. I assure you, they would be quite ridiculous in the circumstances. Paul, you may leave us. A fascinating room, isn't it, Mr. Brennan? Mm. One can retire from the world of business to the world of beauty. I was at one time in the importing line, you know. Yes. As is Rakim, said you're in business together. No, Mr. Brennan. A bad shot in the dark. Five years ago, in line with certain of my activities, I had an opportunity of buying in Cairo $200,000 worth of the most beautiful diamonds. I paid somewhat less for them, of course. I had them smuggled into Istanbul. Isn't this beautiful? Mm. Am I boring you, Mr. Brennan? No, no, no. Sad stories are my favorites. A foolish bookkeeper of mine stole the diamonds and sold them to Aziz Rakim. A few days later, Aziz heard that my bookkeeper had met with a fatal accident. He made arrangements to leave the country. Didn't make it, huh? No. Unfortunately not. And I never recovered my property, Mr. Brennan. You know, sir, this loss has been a source of considerable unhappiness to me. One of the saddest stories I've ever heard. Mr. Brennan, I feel those diamonds are still in Istanbul. I call upon you to find them for me. You will be handsomely paid. Like uh, how much? Like $10,000. Now, couldn't swing the deal for that. I feel you owe it to yourself to try, sir. I don't think our old friend as is would approve. Have a cigarette? Of course, do forgive me. Is that Professor? In the back alleys. You're a pretty good talker. Now, let's talk a little more about Aziz. No! Paul. He will take Mr. Brennan back to his hotel. As you say, sir, it will now be the technique of the old days. Good kid you've got here, Professor. Get him to tell you sometime how he tried to make his own deal for the diamonds. That's final. I don't care what we spent for the tickets. Oh, stop being a stubborn ox. Well, we're not going to see no Hamlet, especially in Turkish. There's no need to raise your voice, Charles. Oh, come off it with that Charles routine. You're not that far from Brooklyn, Marge O'Hare. You never will be. It is times like this I know my mother was right. You are a slob. Having fun? Mr. Brennan, how nice to see you. It's a pleasure to see you. Especially wearing that beautiful gown. What is it, Pekka, Dior? Well, Balenciaga. You see, Charles, there are men who can tell a Paris gown from a diving suit. <laughs> diving suit, yeah. Oh, I have a drink, Brennan. Oh, thanks very much. Big evening plan? Oh, well, no, not really. We, we thought we might go to the theater. They're showing a Hamlet, you know. In Turkish. You know, I think we're going to skip that for tonight, Marge. Oh, that'll be a shame. Well, that'll be some experience, Hamlet, in Turkish. Uh, we won't uh, skip it. Well, Madame Boyle, quelle belle surprise. How wonderful to find you here. Well, Monsieur Moray. Charles, you remember Monsieur Moray? Bonjour. Monsieur. And uh, this is Mr. Brennan. Monsieur. Chère madame, je peux avoir le plaisir de danser avec vous? Huh? Dance. Oh. No, oui. Oui, oui. If Monsieur does not mind. Oh, he doesn't. If you'll excuse us. <laughs> French businessman we met coming over. Couldn't take his eyes off of Marge. Can't blame him. <laughs> Waiter. Uh, 
Uh, whiskey. You can't tell me about Moray. Did he uh, happen to tell you what his business is? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> He's what you might call one of those uh, professional international charmers. You know that type. Great guy with the girl. Well, if he tries to get cozy with Marge, no, she's no, 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 he's not that obvious. But when it comes to that smooth technique, oh, man, he's the guy that wrote the book. But I'll say this for him: if your wife likes culture, Moray certainly got it. And when will I get her home? I'll break her cultured arm. Say, if you're going to catch that show, it's just about curtain time. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry to bust in, but we've got a show to catch. Remember, honey? Now look, dear, if you don't want to go, it's perfectly all don't right with me. Don't want to go? Me? What, are you kidding? Sorry, Moray. Oh, Charlie, See you, it's Brennan. ridiculous. I haven't heard it. Nice meeting you. Boils have just left the hotel, sir. Right, wait a minute. Thank you very much, sir. It's been lovely. Goodbye, Vera. Good night. Steffi. I'm afraid you have made a mistake. No. I'm Jim. Jim. Jim Brennan. Well, I'm sorry. Mr. Brennan, I think you confused my wife with somebody else. Her name is Karen. Karen Fielding. Oh. I beg your pardon. It's quite all right. Good night. Oh, yes, Mr. Brennan. That couple were just left. Fielding's the name, I think. Do you know them? Mr. and Mrs. Fielding. Oh, yes. He is a construction engineer from London. The consulate here could tell you more about him. He knows me, darling. He knows me. He could have been wrong, you know. A mistake isn't impossible. He called me Stephanie. Stephanie. And he says he knows me. Yes, I dare say he does. His name, Brennan, it means nothing to you. Uh -huh. Well, we knew this might happen one day, didn't we? Look at me. Are you happy? You know I am. Do I? I think I know what it must be like. Always wandering, groping, searching for memory that's never there. And then I think of you and all I am and all you've given me, and the past doesn't matter. It could, you know. We have a very perfect life together, you and I, Karen. If you open the past now, it could smash us. It's for you to decide, darling. A question mark for the past or one for the future. It's your choice. I can plead my own case quite simply. I love you very much. Oh, Douglas. Morning, sir. Morning. This is filling in, please. Are you expected, sir? I'm an old friend. Name's Brennan. Do you mind waiting here, sir? No, it's all right. Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fielding lived here long? Uh, no, sir. And Mr. Fielding uses this house only during his visits from England. Oh, thank you. Yes, Mr. 
Mr. Brennan. Mr. Brennan? Me? Steady. What is this? What's happened? And last night, after five years, when the I saw you at you my... The woman you saw last night was not the woman you knew. Do you mean to tell me that you're not Stephanie Bauer? Perhaps I was. Five years ago, I lost my memory as a result of what the doctors call shock. I was found wandering the streets by the man who is now my husband. My life began with Douglas Fielding. I'm quite content with that life. What I was before has no meaning for me. Steffi, listen to me. The day you disappeared in that fire, we were going to fly to Paris Please, together. I have no intention of here. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not interested in my past. Nor in you, Mr. Brennan. I'm sorry if I hurt you, but, but there seems to be no other way to make you understand. Now, if you'll please excuse me. Mr. Brennan. I'm sorry they didn't tell me you were here. You seen my wife? Yes. Cigarette? No, thanks. Tell me, Brennan, how well did you know Karen? I was in love with her. And she with you? Yes. I see. Now you find her well and happy in a home and life where she's loved. And I may add, terribly needed. You intend to change all that? I don't intend to let her spend the rest of her life in a state of amnesia. For whose sake, Brennan? Hers or yours? Brennan, I ask you, what could you do that wouldn't be selfish and cruel? I assure you, Karen's happy. Happy? How can she be happy when she can't remember the greater part of her life? Perhaps the best part. What kind of happiness is that? Let her know the truth, and we'll know where we stand. My wife isn't a trophy in some sort of contest between you and me, Brennan. I don't care where we stand. Well, I do. I think she ought to decide which part of her life she wants to remember, or which part she'd sooner forget. We're leaving for England tonight. Is there anything else? No. Not for the moment. Very well. I think you'd better go. Mr. Fielding has called, madam. He says he will pick up the plane tickets on his return. Thank you, Bruno. Those are packed. You can take them down. Feeling I had to go out. I shan't be very long. Yes, ma'am. This way, madam. Hmm? This way. Uh, do you mind if I sit over there? Not at all. Excuse me. Favor vodka gimlets. Still? 
Okay. Let's not start that again. You wanted to see me? Yes. The day Douglas found me, I was holding this in my hand. Your visit this morning made me think of it. I thought you might know why. Simple. I gave it to you. Why? Because I was very much in love with you. We were to be married. I I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come here. After no. I... Please. Don't go. Maybe I was just feeling a little sorry for myself. Why did you really come here? I came here because I'm a coward, Mr. Brennan. I think one has to be very brave to want something desperately and to turn one's back on it. This morning, I tried to be very strong and send away my only hope of recovering the past. But I'm not strong enough. I, I, I don't know what I mean to you, but you mustn't make a mistake. Whatever you're going to tell me, it won't change my life with my husband. Your name is Stephanie Bauer. Your home was in Munich. You were a dress designer. You lived alone. Your parents were killed in the war. These things... Are you sure? Came through here on a cruise. 1951. We met. You were supposed to go home, but you didn't. You stayed here. Don't you remember anything? No, nothing. You must remember that bracelet. I gave it to you. It meant a lot to you. And this place here, this, this table. Why did you choose this particular table? Uh, I'll tell you why. We sat here together. Often. I'm sorry. My husband will be waiting. We're leaving tonight. Mr. Charlie. Uh, hey, honey, he's here. I just wanted to say goodbye. Ah, uh, leaving? Yeah, me and old doll face are moving out in the morning. Six o'clock plane to Paris. It's been delightful making your acquaintance, Mr. Brennan. <laughs> Indeed it has, especially to me. Oh. Hey, don't you get a kick out of them sunglasses? You know, I had Come to... Come on, Charlie, her. we'll oh. be late. Well, if I don't see you again... Uh, you will oh. be. We're leaving on the same plane. Well, we are? Well... Maybe you could show me Paris if uh, Charlie isn't too Come busy on, with... Come on, sweetheart. Oh. Good night, Brennan. Oh, you got another good night. Like in black, just as well as it the first one. Now, you come to look at Brennan. Yes, you like it. You like it. You hold your hand right out of there. Yes, Inspector. Should I announce No, no, no. You? It's a surprise visit. His room is 422, is it? Yes, sir. Thank you.
thought I'd missed you. Yeah? No, I was just saying goodbye to some friends. Really? Uh, may I ask who? Sure, Mr. and Mrs. Boyle. Delightful people. Americans, of course. Mm -hmm. How about a drink? If your friends weren't here to receive your farewells, may I ask when they're leaving? Yeah, sure, tomorrow. You'd have liked a delightful person. Yes, yes, I'm sure I would. Um, uh, shall we uh, go to your room? Yeah. Drink? Oh, no, thanks. Not that I'm working. Ah, that's a good boy. I see you also plan to leave Istanbul. Yep. In the morning. Big diamond search is still on, eh? Go ahead, help yourself. Well, I really came to ask you about uh, Mrs. Fielding. Oh, I'm getting a little tired of discussing my personal affairs with the Turkish police. Customs department. Ah, right, customs. I understand you saw her in the hotel bar this afternoon. You'd be surprised how legal it was. You tell her about uh, the past. Tried to. How'd you take it? She didn't. Nothing registered. You know, one day I'm going to pack a bag without you getting your nose in it. Tell me, when did she uh, leave? Oh, about four hours ago. Do you mind? Sure. Did she seem upset when she left you? She was trying to catch up with the past. She went home to her husband. How do you expect she'd feel? Brennan, uh, Mrs. Fielding never returned home. She disappeared. But that was over four hours ago. Yes. How did she leave here, do you know? Well, how would I know? In a taxi, I guess. I don't know. Well, if she should try to reach her, well, let me know. Oh, sure. Yeah, anything. Must be a police headquarters office. It's a ratchet's office. Okay. Good night. Just ring here? Yes. It was a man talking, wasn't it? Thanks. Mr. Darius would like to see you. Darius? I can't say it's exactly mutual. Stay where you are. You shouldn't be so careless. Look, I'm warning you. You're not warning me now. Go ahead.
She in the building? She in the building? Don't speak English, eh? To cut it! the game as you desire it. So long as you're calling the ground rules, why don't you get rid of this plug ugly? He makes me bashful. You know, of course, that we have Mrs. Fielding. That might upset Mr. Fielding, but uh, don't see how to buy any diamonds. I put it to you, sir, that you are still very much in love with the woman you presume to be dead. I shall be happy to make an exchange. The diamonds in the return for Mrs. Fielding's release, alive and well. Same way you released Aziz? Aziz was a very stubborn man, sir. As far as I'm concerned, uh, Mrs. Fielding might be home right now with her husband. I never bluff, Mr. Brennan. One is so indefensible when it is cold. After you, sir. What do they want? Okay, boys. You've got it. What's next? I wonder how much you really value those stones. I haven't got those diamonds. But she has. That is not only ungallant, sir, but a lie. Do you think I'd still be hanging around Istanbul if I could lay my hands on them? <laughs> sure. I came here to get them. But she got them, didn't you? No. But you didn't even know that she was still alive. I saw her picture in a London newspaper. I traced her here. She came back to get those diamonds and she got them, didn't you? I came here with my husband. I don't know about any diamonds. I can't remember. A very convenient case of amnesia. You offered me a deal. Ten thousand bucks to find him. Still hold? Still holds. Where are they, Stephanie? I don't know. Where are they? I don't know. I gave them to you. The day before the fire. No, I... I can't remember. You were going to smuggle them out of Turkey and meet me in Paris. I can't. I don't know. Stephanie, where are they? Paul. Perhaps you can persuade Mrs. Fielding. Bring them down. He's a ring. Don't lie. physical damage, the effects of fear on the human mind are difficult to gauge. Let her rest, Mr. Fielding. For now, we can do no more. Thank you, Doctor. I'll come by again in the morning. 
Gentlemen. Brennan, I owe you an apology. Save it. I've got a six o'clock plane to catch. That is, with the inspector's permission. Uh, do you mind if I use your phone? When she comes out of it, just tell her goodbye, and he's got nothing to regret. night we met Jim. Do you remember what you said? Very well. I said you had a choice to make. Come and sit down. I've made my choice. We'll go back to England together. I'll be well again and I'll make you happy more than before. Now that you've decided, would you mind telling me why? Because I'm your wife. I want to have a marriage. You're my wife, and I'm sure you care for me. You're very grateful. You feel drawn to me by every emotion except love. That's reserved for Jim Brennan. My life is with you, Douglas. I wonder how grateful you'd be if I told you I've known who you were in the first month. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to lose you. I've known about Jim Brennan, too. What happened to me? It wasn't your fault, Douglas. Do you remember that young psychiatrist who examined you in London? I think his name was Evans. He was under the impression he could cure you. I sent him away. Now what have you to say? I say, you are still my dearest friend, whatever you have done. I'll try to prove it to you. Flight to Paris, Vienna. Right That's our flight, through to Paris. Thank you. Thank you. You are Mr. Boyle? Hmm? My friend. Is this your complete baggage? <laughs> it better be, but the way she packs, well, it might be. Technicality, belong. monsieur. Your baggage will be returned shortly. Bagage la royale, Benny Takipet. Gumrayak lakia estia. Mere technicality. If you will accompany us, please. Now, wait a minute. That's your trouble, Charlie. You never understand technicalities. Technicalities? You don't even know what technicalities is. Yes, very short. Goodbye. Oh, 
Please accept my apologies, but I have to examine your luggage. May I have your keys, please? Well, why me? Because you are such a big shot. <clears throat> oh, so they're bothering you, too. No, oh, no, the inspector never bothers me. We've got a deal. But uh, I wouldn't like my friends to miss their plane. Let me handle this. Well, just so we get out of here. Can I have your keys? Well, would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, it's about uh, $200,000 worth of trouble. But I think we can take care of it. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. You see, I told you. You should have listened to your mother. <gasps> Is this a confession or declaration? That's up to you. Final call. SAS, flight SK-852. All passengers, please, on board. Your plane? That's still up to you. And Mr. and Mrs. Boyle are free to go. Bagage la royale, then. We're almost at the airport. You're a pretty good cop. Oh, yes. It is a pity that you will not be here to read my report. It should be quite a classic. So long, Brenda. Good flight. So long, Neral. Fasten your seatbelts, please. Please fasten your seatbelt. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been ordered back. Please fasten your seatbelts again.